the diamond sutra eternal is spontaneous eternal is spontaneous if your silence and bliss is caused by anything certainly it will disappear one day that which is caused by something cannot be eternal you can manage it through yoga and meditation too but it will not be a natural happening it did not evolve out of your spontaneity it was artificial and arbitrary it was as arbitrary as you can manage through chemical drugs but the drugs will wear off and as soon as the effect of drugs wears off the effect will vanish as well for instance you have taken a certain quantity of lsd or a large bag of drink and you will feel blissful you will find everything blissful and joyous life will appear to have immense beauty and splendor trees will appear greener and roses more red to you every face will appear radiant life will become luminous and psychedelic too but this is not spontaneous sooner or later the lsd or the peg is going to wear off the next morning you will find the trees once again dusty greenness is not there the luminosity has vanished you will see faces once again dull and boring all is dusty and arbitrary the same can happen through yoga fasting or through any technique whatsoever all techniques are good these give you a glimpse only a framed image it cannot become your state also it cannot become your consciousness so there is no problem in it it was going to be lost nothing is wrong with it the only difference is your attitude you were thinking that through yoga and meditation you would be able to create something eternal that is not possible the eternal cannot be created anything that is created will certainly fall and disappear one day the eternal comes to you uncreated and spontaneously the eternal happens on its own when you have gone beyond all techniques and methods to or you have dropped them all then you come to see one thing you realize just to be is enough the only be nothing else is needed there is no need to make any arrangement you realize all beings are buddhas from the very beginning when you have understood that you are not to grow into something you are already there then you relax this is what has happened to buddha he did everything that was humanly possible but nothing happened then he realized the futility of it all buddha became utterly relaxed and in that state enlightenment it dawned and the relaxation should not be a method you should not seek relaxation through yoga posture this very understanding is relaxing 
you relax all effort disappears you live your ordinary life you chop wood carry water from the well cook food eat sleep love and live ordinary with no hankering or any desire for ordinary or extraordinary and then one day it is there and then one day it is there it is not of your making it is not your doing one day it is suddenly there one day you open your eyes and it is there and then it never leaves you but it has to come on its own otherwise managed by you it will come and leave it will come and go then it remains only a mere glimpse but you were there the memory was there the past was there otherwise who will say all is divine if all is really divine then what is the point of saying all is divine if all is divine yes it is divine there is no need to say even saying simply says that you know that all is not divine saying simply says that you are simply posing and imposing something indeed meditation and yoga creates a certain kind of happiness then man creates an entire philosophy on that joy that this is what god is that this is divineness that this is love and thankfulness this is dream life the dream continues for a few days and you enjoy your dream one day man has to come out of it you could not continue to live in a dream forever a dream is never forever otherwise what will be the distinction between reality and dream a dream is only for a moment sooner or later you will wake up your eyes open and the moment your eyes open the dream is no more the ordinary life is there once again you were there at those sunlit peaks and you were there in the dark valleys too one thing is similar you dark valleys or sunlit peaks it does not matter all that matters is you the ego is there the ego is in the dark valley sometimes and at the other times it transcends to peak and the ego goes on creating dreams in myriad forms both sunlit peak and dark valley are the impositions of your dreams and your ideas there is no dark valley if all is divine how can there be dark valleys it is the division of the mind duality and if there is dark valleys how can there be divine there are neither dark valleys nor sunlit peaks all is just the game of ego it goes on moving in polarities from one situation to another when you realize it this sweet dream is converted into night dream, nightmare both are dreams however wake up and drop both dreams then for the first time you are connected to that which is the ultimate reality 
But remember in that moment when reality is there, you are not. That is the only criteria to understand. No other criteria does exist. The only criteria is if the experience is of reality, you will not be there. Because two cannot exist. Bliss will be there. But you will not be there. When I say you will not be there, you as ego, you as the one that divides everything into polarities, there will be nobody to say I am feeling bliss. That's why when I say in response to someone who asks me how are you, either silence is the answer then you will not understand. If I say I am as I am, you will not understand. If I say I do not know, you will find what crazy answer is this. Everybody knows that I am good or bad, I am happy or sad, but how can you say? And you are enlightened and you cannot, you do not know if you are happy or unhappy. The problem is, the two cannot exist. Bliss will be there and the moment bliss is there, you are bliss. You are nothing else but embodiment of bliss. When you are bliss and there is no one to say anything, there will be nobody to say I am feeling bliss. God will be there but you will not be there. There will be nobody to say all is divine. Let that be remembered. And this can happen spontaneously, only no effort, no technique, no meditation can help you. All the technique and meditation and everything takes you to the point where you feel exhausted. Buddha did all that was possible. He lived on one grain of rice for six months. There was nothing which was humanly possible and Buddha did not do. But he realized the futility of all. Buddha's life is a message and yet still we do not understand and we want to do this yoga or that technique or this or that. You can produce it. The, whatever you produce is artificial. It goes only so far and then disappears. When you do yoga, observe what are you doing. Is standing on your head? How can standing on your head make you enlightened? No. Just standing on your head cannot make you enlightened. Is standing on head may give you a shock to your head. This is a shock treatment. Too much blood rushes to the brain and it may give you a moment when thinking stops suddenly. Too much blood has rushed so suddenly. You are standing on the head so the gravitation is pulling all your blood towards the head. And the head cannot manage this kind of flow of blood. So for a moment thinking stops. In that stopping you will feel I am blissful, all is divine, but how long can you stand on your head? And even if you learn to stand on your head for a long time, the mind will also learn how to go on continuing thinking with that flood of blood. There is no problem. Mind will learn by and by. Then you can stand on your head and thinking will continue as well. I remember an anecdote. You can develop a habit that you can stand on your head for a long time. And Osho has mentioned an incident when he was a child. He said, I used to stand on my head very long. 
it became such a habit that one day I fell asleep. That is almost impossible standing on the head and you fell asleep. When I told one old man who was a kind of yogi in my village, he said, that is impossible. This has not happened to me. To fall asleep is standing on your head. For sleep to happen, the head needs to rest, blood flow than ordinarily. That is why we use pillows in the night to put the head a little higher so blood does not go too much to the head. Otherwise the head continues functioning. The more intellectual a person is, he will need the bigger pillow and sometimes even two, three or four pillows. Otherwise just a little blood and the thought process starts. So the food supply has to be spontaneously cut. The old man said it is impossible, but it happened to me. Not only did I fall asleep, but I fell from my head stand as well. It can become habitual. Not only thought, but sleep and dream are possible too. So if you stand on your head too long, you will be accustomed to it. And the joy has happened for the first time, will never happen again. And what do you do when you meditate? How can you manage enlightenment through meditation and yoga, fasting or dieting? No, enlightenment is far be, even beyond these stars. Buddha fasted. He did all the rituals. Whatsoever was humanly possible, nothing happened. He followed the two traditions. One the tradition of intense austerity. The other is the yoga path, but nothing happened. All these small things of this earth he followed. Yes, they can purify you, cleanse you, but they cannot give you the taste of enlightenment. Indeed, they can give you a few moments of joy, but that joy is not to be interpreted as bliss. Because you are there and bliss happens only when you disappear. They can sometimes fill you with great light. But that light is not the eternal light. For eternal light you can only be feminine, receptive. You, can, you cannot remain a doer thing. You have to be in a kind of inactivity or passivity. You have to wait patiently. Be ordinary and wait. And I am not saying not to do yoga exercise, I do on a regular basis to keep my body fit. But that is all the function of yoga is as a technique. These are good for the body and extremely beneficial. And I am not saying do not meditate either. That too is perfectly good and cleansing. But never think that by yoga and meditation you will produce God. When you reach to a certain state in meditation, it becomes spontaneously. You do not have to do meditation, but meditation becomes a spontaneous process. God cannot be produced, but you can be cleansed. And there will be more possibility for God to happen then. This is not possible, but this is how it happens. 
However, God happens only when you are not, when you are not even looking for him, when you are simply sitting, doing nothing, and there is no desire, not even a small fragment of desire in the mind to be this or that, to be anything else, to be somebody else, or even to become enlightened and all that when you are just there sitting and doing nothing suddenly it happens the grass grows by itself all you can do remove the weeds water it fertilize it, but grass grows by itself. This always happens sudden. It descends on you. It is transcendence. And when you are no more, enlightenment is, and you are not, God is, and you are not. This is how it happened always. And this is the secret of transformation. Transformation can indeed happen wherever you are, but you are not. You do not exist as ego. It depends on your mindfulness. If you are mindful of moment to moment of the small things, transformation can happen this very moment, right wherever you are. But people have a wrong connotation that for transformation you have to go to a special place, to go to a special technique. Human mind is obstinate like a mule that can never grasp the crux of matter. The problem is not where you live, the problem is you. You can go to a commune, you will carry all your problems with you and others who have come to live there have also come just like you with all their problems. Sooner or later those problems will surface and start interacting with one another. These outer things cannot help because these are distractions. It is like a Sikh who considers that he can be healthy only in a nursing home or outside. The real change has to happen within you, not in a particular place. It happened to Buddha in the forest. There was no communion. He was in Niranjana river. He was not able to cross the river. He was so weak doing that, those austerities and rituals that he became so weak he could not cross the stony, shallow Nirandina river. He fell. He held on to the tree that was leaning from the other side of the shore and start watching the stars disappear one after the other. Somehow he gathered courage and came out of the river. He met there a person named Sujata came she brought the sweet rice and other food items. Having eaten that, Buddha made a bed of leaves and sat. The real change has to happen within you. The real change has to happen in the deepest core of your being. If it happens there, only then life will be different, not otherwise.